And now for something completely different. And today we are going to do, as John Cleese said, something completely different from what I normally do at stephencombs.com. Normally on the channel, I cover things like gadgets and retro computing. Today, though, what I'm going to cover is building bricks, specifically Lego style building bricks. But we're not really going to focus on a Lego set today. We're going to focus on a brand called Kobe. I was at work a couple of weeks ago and a colleague came up to me who is a fellow uh, Lego enthusiast, but also fellow military model e enthusiast. And he shared with me a U-2 submarine boat, uh, the U-48 submarine model, actually, from Kobe. And he was raving about the quality of these building blocks. And I thought to myself, I don't know can you compete with Lego? I've been down that road before, as I'll talk about. But he said, well, let me just bring it in and let you see it. So he brought it in the next day, and I called me impressed. I was very impressed at the build quality of this other building brick brand, U48. It had good build quality, had good heft. And then he began to explain to me that they have other models. And one of the models that he knew would just speak to me was an M60 Abrams main battle tank because I am a former armor officer and I have uh, been searching for a, just a fun model to put in my office. Now, I am not a great model maker, but of course I do love building bricks. So he, again, he got to my sense of, you know, you want this thing and you want to try it. So lo and behold, I decided to purchase the Kobe M60 Abrams main battle tank. So what I wanted to do today, though, was take that Kobe M60, put it together, and then along the way, compare it with Lego brand building blocks. So that's what we're going to do today. I hope you'll enjoy my build of the Kobe M60 Patton. Before I build the model, I should probably explain my Lego cred and my military cred on top of that. First of all, I'm a Lego fan from way back. I'm an adult fan of Lego and admittedly a Lego snob. Lego clone brands such as Mega Bloks, Creo, and Best Lock were always seen as inferior brands fraught with legal troubles, inconsistent color, loose fits, shoddy building instructions, and of course, poor click compatibility. I love Lego so much that in the early 2000s, my wife and I hosted a then kind of popular podcast called Bricks in My Pocket. Hey, if you remember that, leave a comment below. During that time, I was also selected to serve as a Cycle 2 Lego ambassador, which was an amazing experience. Despite all this, the Kobe submarine model, it just reached out to me. But I wanted to find out, could a clone brand ever appeal to me? Now on the Army side, I am a retired Army officer. I spent 27 years in the military. I started my Army career as an armor officer in the late 1980s. The first armored vehicle I began training on was an M60A3. Even beyond retirement, I'm a huge fan of military and especially armor history. Put all that together, I immediately let go of all my Lego snobbery. I pulled up the Amazon website and I started to research Kobe military models and made the purchase of the M60A3. And by the way, I also added an M113, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. Let's begin by asking the question, who is Kobe? What's their country of origin and what else do they do? Let's find out by looking at their website. Kobe is a Polish manufacturer of high quality construction blocks manufactured in its own production facility. The construction blocks are manufactured from the highest quality European raw materials, have certificates and meet all the necessary standards and restrictive requirements of the EU for products for children. I would assume at this point for adults as well. Kobe is an importer and distributor of a wide range of licensed toys. If you do look on their website, you'll find other things besides building blocks. So you have to wonder, does that other business distract them from the quality of their building blocks? Lego is singularly focused. They do have some supplemental lines and other things, but really building blocks is their bag, pun intended. Can the same be said for Kobe? Let's find out. 
All right, before we build the model, what I wanna do first is take a look at the packaging. The box itself, the cardboard thickness is on par with Lego. The artwork is colorful and the graphics are polished and really do kind of grab the eye. The front of the box places the M60 model in a simulated battle environment. That's a really nice touch. The piece count for this model is 605 elements and you get two figurines, action figures in Lego parlance minifigs. You get an American officer and an American soldier. There's no stickers, which is a huge win for me. I cannot stand when Lego or any building block manufacturer includes stickers. Just ask my wife. She's heard me rant about stickers in Lego models for years. It always seems like a cheap out to me instead of being pad printed as Kobe highlights on their box. We even get technical information for not only the M60, but also the included M16. This is the only place you'll find this information. Unfortunately, Kobe doesn't include any additional details in the building instructions. That would have been a nice touch. If you scan this QR code found on the box with your phone camera, it takes you not to the Kobe main page, but actually directly to the Kobe model page. That's a nice feature because on the model page, you'll find a complete description and history of the M60, the model specifications, a virtual instruction manual, some owner comments, and other related products. Now, one thing I'll say is that this video uses a lot of still images. If you'd like to see those images, make sure you check out the companion blog post where I have a shared Google album available for you to peruse now, before we build the model, we need to open the box as is customary in a lot of my videos. We'll do a quick open the box. And let me tell you, it is quick. We'll open up the side of the box and inside what we'll find are the building instructions. That was the first thing I saw. After the building instructions were pulled out, I found these three large bags of building elements. No model is any good if you can't put the darn thing together. And let's see how Kobe's instructions stack up. First of all, paper quality is on par with Lego. Pages are thick and the paper is high quality, glossy stock. I do appreciate that. Looking inside, we find theme background pages. That's kind of cool. Numbered steps, a parts list for each step, and a parts placement with previous layers grayed out to highlight the part placement for the current step. And it does a good job despite me messing up a couple areas, which we'll talk about later. In the back of the instructions is a complete bill of materials. I do appreciate the back page sharing some models that I might have interest in after building this one. It does make me want to visit their website and explore what else they have to offer. Parts come in numbered bags that coincide with the building instructions, which we'll spend a little more time with. The numbers are black letters on white background. They're easy to find and easy to sort. Instead of the crinkly kind of plastic used by Lego in the larger bags, they're more consistent with plastic used in Ziploc baggies, albeit maybe a little bit thinner polymer. The smaller bags inside are more consistent with Lego bags and are almost identical in quality, sound, and appearance. Lego will soon ship bricks in environmentally friendly paper bags. It'll be interesting to see if other brands such as Kobe follow the industry leader. All right, enough opening the box and looking at what's inside. Let's build this thing. It's time for construction. And I admittedly was really excited to dive in. And here's what I found while building the M60 Patton. Very first thing, take a long look at that upper left-hand corner of that first page. Kobe probably learned lessons from past models and included a handy notice the difference warning that I failed to notice and observe and therefore did in fact miss the difference between those parts A, B, and C. Because of this, I had a gotcha that later required me to tear the model down several layers. Read the instructions, Stephen. That's always a good thing. All right, next I want to compare the Kobe bricks to the Lego bricks before we start this significant build. Look at the plate. I immediately noticed the Kobe name on, on the top of each stud, which is eerily reminiscent of the Lego brand in font. Looking at the back of the larger plate, I noticed uh, was a marked difference from Lego. However, things look more normal or consistent with smaller bricks and plates, as you can see here. Enough of the branding and comparison discussion. Let's get to building. Valley, do you want to help put this together? Loki, you look uninterested. All right, who's helping? Guess it's you, Valley. Good boy.
You know, as I was building, I noticed an interesting variety of building elements. There are many familiar element shapes, but there were new ones I'd not seen in Lego kits, and I've built a bunch of them, and I'm sure I say this, and immediately Lego fans out there are going to tell me, you can find this part in this set and give me the number off the top of their head. People are that serious about Lego. However, these are ones that I had not experienced in my building. First of all, what I found interesting was the odd number lengths of plates and bricks in the Kobe set. While Lego normally includes even number elements like two by two bricks or plates, two by fours and two by sixes, this model had many like two by fives and two by seven odd numbered elements. I was also a fan of these one by three elements that provide a flat surface on the bottoms of plates and bricks. Kobe includes what appears to be many custom parts for this and possibly several of their other track vehicles. Let's talk action figures, or in Lego parlance, minifigs. Kobe minifigs are more anatomically correct, if I can say that, but they are a little closer to what real human proportions are. This set includes an American soldier and an American officer. I will say I love the armored cavalry hat and the sunglasses on the officer and the helmet and vest on the soldier. Those are really nice touches. The included M16, as I mentioned really early in the video, is an element you will never find in a Lego set. And the set, I think, uh, appropriately includes binoculars because as an armored cav soldier officer, uh, you need binoculars when you're on the battlefield. Okay, I was interested in Kobe quality control. Do Kobe bricks actually measure up to Lego bricks? So one of the non-scientific ways I decided to try and check this out was to measure parts. So I measured the weight of a brick and a plate. I was pleased to find that they are almost identical for like parts. There's a very small difference between them. Next, I made a quick parts fit comparison between Kobe and Lego elements. The fit was tight and the click was satisfying. As far as fit and weight goes, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between the two other than the name on the stud. In hindsight, I should have compared fit clearance. However, that would have taken time away from building, would require some additional tools. Uh, let me just say that fit and clearance feels to be similar to Lego. Uh, somebody else can do the scientific testing there. However, there was an issue with the Kobe elements that hindered the final product appearance. The runner or the sprue cutoffs where the plastic runs through the mold down to the actual part where they have what we call cutoffs, they're visible on the model after assembly. It, so what's happened is they place the runners or the sprues connections on the part that can be seen on the exterior of the model. You don't see these on the box. They've probably been digitally removed. However, they are very noticeable all over my model. Here's another QC issue on a plate. I've never seen a Lego brick pass through QC that had studs that look like this. What happened here? While my weight exercise revealed similar results, as you can see, this part could tell a different manufacturing story. On this element, there appears to be a thin top layer that lets the form of the inside of the brick bleed through if the light hits the element just right. Here's an element where an engineer made the very unfortunate decision to locate the sprue right on top of a stud. Thankfully, this part is embedded within the model and not seen after the build. But you know, if you want to use this for your own builds on a top layer or a studs not on top build, then this would be annoying. Earlier, I mentioned my disdain for stickers. I love that Kobe stamps all of their elements. I'll say it again, I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand times, I can't stand stickers. One part of the build that concerned me prior to putting it together was the tracks. Would they be realistic? Would they work? I'm happy to report that the construction operation of the tracks is excellent. The tracks have a center guide, that's a real thing by the way, as you can see in this image, I have a center guide I keep in my office. They have good fit across the rollers and it even sounds good when you push the model across the table. I wanted to compare the cost of Kobe models compared to Lego. So I did some research. The M60 patent had 605 elements, two action figures, and I paid $49.43 on Amazon. The retail cost, when I do the conversion of euros to dollars, was $52.14. 
I tried to find a similar model with the same or lower number of pieces, similar build difficulty, and include minifigs from Lego. Something with a military theme. So again, I go back to the closest Lego theme is the Star Wars line. The closest Lego model I could find to meet my criteria was the Y-Wing Starfighter. It had 578 pieces, four action figures, a couple more action figures, and a cost of $55.99, but with a retail of $69.99 or $70. Now we have to remember that Lego has to pay Star Wars some branding fees for their models. However, if we look at Amazon, the price is about $5 more for 27 fewer pieces for the Lego model, but you get two additional minifigs. Now that's at Amazon pricing. If we just go pure retail pricing, the story is a little bit different. $52 for Kobe versus $70 for Lego. That's about a roughly 20% increase for the Lego set for less elements. Okay, there's my build of the Kobe M60 Patton. Hopefully you enjoyed that little journey as I put that together and uh, kind of compared it with the Lego brand, but really probably what some folks want to know is what's my recommendation? Would I purchase Kobe branded building blocks in the future? Let me go through my little list I have over here. First of all, it was fun, but at times it was challenging. I did, uh, as I said, have to remove some bricks and go back down a few layers because I didn't pay attention, but it is a good model. It's a fun model to put together. I would not recommend it for small children, not because of the content of whether uh, children should be exposed to, you know, main battle tanks at an early age. You have to decide that as a family, but um, just because of the small intricate parts, you want to be very careful with that. And it can become confusing with the building instructions. The model is an accurate recreation of the M60. I know I've spent many an hour on an M60 and it has enough details and touches that really make it a fun model for any military modeler, even if you're not into building bricks, but you're into military models, I think you will enjoy putting this together and having this on your desk. The proportions feel correct. Uh, I love that the main gun moves up and down. The turrets move, both of them, the cupola and the turret move independently, which is nice. There's some extra detail on the bustle rack, which I think is nice. And then I also like that the driver's hatch opens up and turns. Uh, I think just having that little extra touch is nice because it, it actually operates the way a real driver's hatch was, which is up, out, and down. I love the tracks. We talked about the tracks in the video. Uh, they feel good. They look good. Uh, they operate well, and they even sound good when you roll it across across the desk, it has like a mini tank sound, track sound, which is a very distinctive if you've ever been around a tank, you know what I'm talking about. The inclusion of the ammo box was a nice little touch along with the action figures. I do wish the ammo box though had included some ammo. That would have been nice. Basically what I've done is I've just taken the two extra track pieces and thrown them in the ammo box. Listen, if you can get over the sprue errors, that little, those little white specks all over the exterior. I really think this is a good model. That is the one thing though that just drives me nuts and it's something you would never find in Lego. The other thing that's kind of missing is this ability to take your action figures and put them in the model. That would be cool. Uh, I'd love to put the American soldier and the armored officer in the tank, but you can't do that. It's not designed for that. I, I thought maybe I could uh, split the uh, minifigs or action figures in half and maybe put it in the cupola, but it, it just doesn't fit. There's no way to really easily do that. They're a little bit out of proportion for the tank. So what's my final recommendation? Well, I would say this, as long as Lego will not sell mili military models, Kobe's probably your brand to go to. If you, again, if you can forgive that spoo removal visibility, other than that one issue, I think Kobe has a lot going for it. They have a lot of positives. For instance, no stickers, um, great element quality, good fit, good build instructions. And I would say, uh, very good attention to detail regarding an actual M60 down to these building block models. And then finally, I think cost is very good for Kobe. I think it's uh, probably, again, probably 10, 20% cheaper uh, per parts than probably what you will find for Lego. But again, it's worth the price because you're never going to find these models from Lego. Will I buy more Kobe models? Uh, I already have. Uh, I, I did purchase the M113 Armored Personnel Carrier. I can't wait to put that together. By the way, if you're interested in that build, let me know. Drop some comments below. Drop some comments at the companion blog post. Those, All those links will be down below that you need for that. Oh, and by the way, all the links for all the models uh, that I've discussed today will also be in the companion blog post. Again, you'll find that link down below in the video description. So go down there and hit that and check that out. 
I will probably per pick up the M1A2. There is an M1A2 main battle tank available too. That one, if I pick that up, that will kind of complete my whole armored career in the United States Army and have all three of those armored vehicles that I had experience with on my desk at work. Would just be nice uh, kind of conversation piece. That concludes my build of the M60 Abrams main battle tank. Again, a little bit something different on the channel today. So at this time, I have nothing left to say, but Retrocombs out.